focus is on receiving the Father's love. That means this morning we want each of us to come into a place where we personally experience the Father's love for us. God's love for us, the Father's love for us is love that is unconditional. That means He loves us no matter what. He loves us even when we didn't love Him. He loved us even when we weren't interested in loving Him. His love is unconditional. That means He loves us and He will keep on loving us. Now, God's love for us, the Father's love for us, is also an uncommon love. Love that is uncommon. The same love with which the perfect one would be loved is the same love with which all the rest of us imperfect ones are loved. God loves you in the same manner and in the same measure that he loves Jesus Christ. The Father's love for us is love that makes us unashamed. His love removes all sin. Yes, we do the wrong. We commit sin. We make blunders, etc. But the Father's love removes that. He says, I want you to be unashamed before me. The Father's love for us is a love that is unbreakable. People may get fed up with us. Quit praying for us. Okay, it doesn't matter. Father's love for you. Nothing can separate, nothing can stop, nothing can break the Father's love for you. So Paul basically is saying, no matter what life throws, no matter what situations, no demonic being, no angelic being, no human being can stop the Father's love for you. It's unbreakable. So the Father's love is a love that makes us more than conquerors. It just simply means to gain an overwhelming victory. Victory. To gain complete victory, to vanquish beyond what was necessary, to gain more than a victory. So you're more than a conqueror. Why? Because no, the Father's love for you is so strong, no matter what lashes against you, God's holding on to you. So life may throw its worst. It's worst. And in the middle of it, you can stand and say, I am more than a conqueror. Why? The worst cannot break his love for me. So this is a love that unshackles us. It liberates us. There are two places where there is torment. One is hell. The other is a place where there is fear. The Bible says fear has torment. But if you're living in a place of fear, it's not a nice place. It's tormenting. It's disturbing. It is unsettling. It's not a place of peace or of pleasure. If you are living in fear, fear that one day when you face God, He's going to boot you out. If you're living in that kind of fear, the fear of judgment, the fear of condemnation, if you're living now, in that kind of fear. He says it means your love has not, is not perfect. It is, hasn't matured. It hasn't fully grown. It means your, your understanding of love has not come sufficient, has not grown sufficiently. But when your understanding of love, when love has been perfected in us, meaning when your understanding of the Father's love has grown sufficiently, is complete, it sets you free from fear. But when we do understand the Father's love, it unshackles us. It liberates us. You stand before the Father without any sense of guilt, shame, and condemnation as a child of God. We need to know Believe, receive, and rest in the Father's love. All human beings have these three needs. Security, self-worth, significance. You and I abide in the love that God has for us. These three needs, you don't have to look for it outside. It's more than met. In the Father's love for you.